So benzene is an especially stable and an especially rigid molecule, and because of that, it shows up in a lot of biologically active molecules. The fact that it's so rigid means it fits reliably into receptor sites. The fact that it's so stable means it can travel from one place to another in a living organism without changing or uh, getting destroyed. So it shows up a lot, and like anything that shows up a lot, it developed a nickname, and so benzene is that nickname. Not only is benzene common, but derivatives of benzene are really common. And so these benzene derivatives, basically benzene rings with tiny branches coming off of them, those have their own nicknames. So for example, if you have benzene with just a methyl group coming off of it, that is called toluene. You might have thought methylbenzene. True, that is one way to name that, but it also has the common name toluene. If you had an OH coming off of benzene, uh, that like an alcohol coming off of benzene, that is called phenol. Phenol. Toluene, by the way, is the third T in TNT. Yeah, it's trinitro, trinitro toluene, and so TNT is really a derivative of toluene. The phenol, phenol was used as the original Listerine. This hydrogen ends up being really acidic because if it leaves, then you have the negative charge that's left behind is rested and stabilized. It's allylic to the whole ring. Um, so it's a really acidic hydrogen, and so if you would mix that around in a solution, that solution's really acidic, swirl that around in your mouth, it kills a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Um, it eventually ended up being too acidic. It was also destroying some of people's tissues in their throat, so they didn't use that in Listerine anymore. If you have a methoxy group coming off, so the smallest ether you could possibly have coming off of a benzene, that's called anisole. And if you have an amine coming off of benzene, so NH2, that's called aniline. And both of these kind of look similar because they have the ani at the very beginning. But anisole you can recognize, you can remember that that is the ether because it has the O in it, just like the ether has the oxygen O in it. So that's anisole and aniline. And these last two are ones that have carbonyls. Now, if you have an aldehyde, then it's called benz aldehyde. And if you have a carboxylic acid, then it's benzoic acid. So those are six common derivative ben der derivatives of benzene. Benzoic acid is used in a lot of food preservatives. They usually treat it with sodium hydroxide. You get a neutralization reaction where you have the conjugate base of benzoic acid, which is called benzoate, and then the sodium counter ion, so sodium benzoate. It's used in a lot of um, food preservatives. The next time you go and buy guacamole at the grocery store, look at the ingredients, you're almost guaranteed to find sodium benzoate in there. So these are six uh, benzene derivatives. If you see these benzene derivatives in a molecule, you will want to use these as the backbone for the name of that molecule. And there's no real way to know these except just memorizing them. So there's sort of six structures, six names you'll want to have memorized. So to see how that works, we can name some of these polysubstituted benzenes. So whenever you see these, the first thing to look at is, do I have one of those six benzene derivatives? Because if I do, that's going to be my backbone. And here we do. This is benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde is our backbone. Now when you number this backbone, you always start, whenever you number the backbones of benzene derivatives, always start numbering at the branch that gives the backbone its name. So for example, this benzene derivative is giving its name because of the aldehyde that's attached. And, that, and so that, where the aldehyde attaches on the benzene ring, that's carbon number one. Then you want to number it so that the first branch you run into gets the lower, lowest possible number. So that here, you'd get that if you go counterclockwise. So we have this other branch coming off of carbon number three, always between numbers and letters goes a dash. And if you recall from organic chemistry one, if you have those weird branches, branches that have branches, um, they have their own nicknames. And here, the nickname for this is isopropyl. 
isopropyl. The two common branch names that come around most often are isopropyl. That's if you have the, uh, the iso, it always tells you you have a sort of snake's tongue at the end of a carbon chain. And the propyl is just telling you in the branch you only have three carbons. If you had another carbon in the branch, you still have the snake's tongue, iso. But if you have another carbon before you get to the backbone, that's isobutyl. So isopropyl, isobutyl, secbutyl is another common one. That's if you have four carbons in your branch and the branch is attached to the backbone on the second of the four carbons, so secbutyl. And a really common one is tert-butyl. That's if you have, sort of like a chicken's foot, you have a carbon and it's bonded to three different methyl groups. So that's tert-butyl. So those are some common named branches. And if you want to know the whole list of the other ones, shoot me an email at cinescat, or cinesct1 at pbsc or palmbeachstate.edu and I will send you a video I made that goes through all of those common names from Organic Chemistry 1 in, uh, in more detail. So I know the name for that is isopropyl because we learned it in Organic Chemistry 1. So you put those two pieces together, the branch, names always, the branch name always goes in front of the backbone name, and the name of the full molecule is 3-isopropyl benzaldehyde. Now there's one other, uh, there's one other sort of naming thing you want to know with these benzene derivatives. And those that's when you have benzene, when you have two branches on benzene, there are three ways you can have two branches on benzene. So the two branches can be right next to each other. Notice whether I put the second branch on the right, or if I were to put it, you know, let me just do this. If I were to put the second branch on the right or the left, these two molecules are the same thing. You just take this one on the right and you flip it over and you end up getting the one on the left. So you could have two branches that are right next door to each other. You could have two branches that are not right next door, but one, three. So like these are both one, two. These are both 1, 3, and they're both the same, notice. You could take one, flip it over like a pancake, and you end up getting the other one. Or you could have 1, 4. So these are the ways you can have branches coming off of, two branches coming off of a benzene. Just these three ways, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. There are shorter names for these. One, two is called ortho. Sometimes you'll just see an O in front of the name. One, three is called meta. Sometimes you'll just see an M. And one, four is called para. So sometimes you'll just have a P. So those are the ways to describe two branches coming off of a benzene. And that'll end up being really significant for chapter 19, that naming scheme. So if we go back to this, we could say 3-isopropyl benzaldehyde, or we could also say it's 1,3. We could say that it is meta. So you could also say that this is meta isopropyl benzaldehyde. And sometimes they even could just write the M, M and M isopropyl benzaldehyde, and that's just saying it's meta, so one three. Okay, so that's your first possible naming here. If we go to this next one, remember when you look at these, you're looking for one of those six benzene derivatives first. If you have one of those, then that's going to be your backbone. So here we do have one of those. We have methyl benzene, which is toluene. So our backbone is going to be toluene. When you number these benzene derivatives, always start numbering them at the branch that gives the common the, the backbone its name. So toluene gets its name because of the methyl group, so that's 
where the methyl group attaches on the benzene, that's going to be carbon number one. And then you number the ring to get the lowest possible number for the first branch you run into. And here, that's numbering it clockwise. So on carbon number two, we have a bromine. So we take that first syllable, brome, and add an O. So two bromo. So you could name this as 2-bromo, and then put the backbone name at the very end, 2-bromo-toluene. Notice the two branches are coming off of, of 1 and 2, so another possible way to name this is ortho, ortho-bromo-toluene. And you may even just see it with an O. So you could see O-bromo-toluene. This next one, whenever you come into, into contact with these, check for those six benzene derivatives. If you have one of those, that's your backbone. If you don't have one of those, that's fine. Uh, you just want to check first. And you do have one here. It is phenol. Benzene with an alcohol on it. It's phenol. So that's our backbone. We're going to start numbering from the, the, the branch, the OH, that gives the, the backbone its name. Phenol gets its name because of the OH. So the carbon that the OH is bonded to is carbon number one. And in this case, we're going to uh, number it counterclockwise because that gives us the smallest number for the first branch we run into. So NO2, this is a special type of branch. That branch is called a nitro branch. So here we're going to have two nitro. And then on four, we also have a nitro and then O2 coming off because those are the same type of branch. They're both nitro branches. You can combine them and we'd get two comma four. Always between numbers goes a comma. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. We're combining two different nitro groups, so don't forget to put the prefix there telling you how many you've put together. So two, four, dinitro. And so we can take that those branch names in front of our backbone name, and the whole compound would be called 2,4-dinitrophenol. Notice that here we cannot use the ortho meta para prefixes because those only work when you have two branches coming off of benzene. If you have more than two branches, you can't use ortho meta and para. Not at least in the name. You can describe branches as being meta to each other. So for example, you could say that the one nitro group is meta to the other nitro group, and it's para to the OH. So this nitro group is para to the OH, the other nitro group is ortho to the OH. So you can give those relative directions if you have more than two branches, but you wouldn't include ortho, meta, and para in the name of the compound unless there were only two branches. For this next one, we have a benzene ring. So the first thing we want to check for is do we have one of those six derivatives? And we don't here. It's close. We have an ethyl benzene, but that's not toluene. Toluene is methyl benzene. So because we don't have any of those derivatives, our backbone is just going to be the benzene ring. So each of those other carbon chains is going to be a branch. This first one, so this one right here, that is going to be an ethyl group. And so you would get ah, ethyl for that. Um, for these other ones, these are both isopropyl groups like we have seen before up here we had this isopropyl group and because we have two isopropyl groups uh, we can combine those and when we combine those, we put the prefix in to say how many of each of those that we have. So because we have two of those, that's going to be diisopropyl. So we sort of have these three different 
we sort of have these three different um, these three different puzzle pieces. We have diisopropyl, we have ethyl, and we have benzene. So the lowest numbering, the way you can number these, the low is and get the lowest numbers for the three branches, is if you start numbering at this isopropyl group down here. If that's number one and you go counterclockwise, then you get the lowest combination of numbers that you could get here. You get one isopropyl, one for the isopropyl, two for the ethyl, four for the other isopropyl. So that's one for diisopropyl. and then 2-ethyl. So the backbone name always comes last. And then if you want to alphabetize those other two names, remember when you alphabetize you don't pay attention to the prefix. You're just comparing the I here with the E. The E comes first, and so the, the branch that has the E in it will come first in the name. So you have 2-ethyl, always between numbers and letters goes a dash, 1,4 diisopropyl, and then benzene. So that's that one there. Then for E, this last one, make sure you, the first thing you want to do is to check for those six benzene derivatives. And you have one here, it's the alcohol on the benzene, that's phenol. And all. So, um, so what you do there is you have your backbone is phenyl, and then each of those branches is going to come off. So the BR is bromo. Those are both bromos. The CL is chloro. We have an isopropyl group at the bottom right, and then we have an ethyl group at the bottom left. Now, if you were to number these, you would get the same numbering scheme all the way around. So in this case, if all of the numbers tie, whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, um, then you want to give the branch with the al alphabetically preferred uh, letter the lower number. So here, you would want to give ethyl the lower number because it starts with an E and I comes later. So that so that alphabetization breaks the sort of tie that you would get. So we're going to number counterclockwise here to give the ethyl group the lower number. And we're only doing that because either way we get the same numbers. We get one, we get two, three, four, five, and six. We have branches on all of those, whether we go clockwise or counterclockwise. So because of that tie, we number it to give the the branch with that starts with a letter earlier in the alphabet, the lower number. This is going to be 2-bromo, 3-ethyl, 4-chloro, 5-isopropyl, and 6-bromo. We can combine the 2 and 6-bromo, so we'll get 2,6-di-bromo. And then we just alphabetize these. Notice that you don't look at the, the D, you don't look at the prefix when you're alphabetizing. So we're comparing B, I, C, and E. The backbone name always comes the last. Of those, B comes first of the other ones, then C, then E, and finally, I. So you'd have 2,6-dibromo, 4-chloro, 3-ethyl, 5-isopropyl phenol. And that is the beautiful name for that compound. So that's the procedure you'd use for naming these benzene derivatives. Look for one of these six uh, one of these six common names, one of those, if you have those branches on a benzene, use the common name for these as the backbone name. And just watch out for these ortho, meta, and para ways of referring to how, how far branches are from each other on a benzene ring. 
Other than that, the naming is mostly like the naming that you've seen in previous chapters.